morning once again. I'm Tom Nelson. Since I didn't say that before and I haven't met you, I can't wait to meet you uh, as we serve our Lord together. And thank you for being with us both here and online with us today. We began our Lenten journey with an invitation to step into the wilderness on Ash Wednesday. For some, that may seem like a fearful place, especially when we see last week that the Spirit has led Jesus into the wilderness where he was confronted almost immediately by the devil with every temptation that we face. We learned that the wilderness is a place of solitude, but sometimes it's frightening to be alone with our own thoughts. But the lesson is that we were to be led and we are to be led by the Spirit through the wilderness. So I hope that as we go through this journey together, you will remember the Spirit leads us where we go. Sometimes, however, we're not sure where God is, especially when troubles arise, which leads us to the second lesson of the wilderness that we find in the Scripture today. Verse 8 says, Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Let's pray. Father, in the quiet of this room, these words from your psalm, from your son David, that for all of us bring in so many, many rich vibrations. Help us to hear your voice, to seek your face in the midst of this conversation this morning and in the midst of our lives always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 27 for and not it's never been one of my favorites but it's always been a favorite of many people so a lot of people love psalm 27 that might be because we have been where the psalmist david has been it appears that david is in a proverbial wilderness and we can relate can't we that <laughs> we can relate what that's like i think Part of the attraction to this psalm is that Psalm 27 flows from confidence to crisis to confidence. At first reading, it seems like two different psalms, one of confidence and one of fear. The NRSV version that we heard from today that puts a heading on the psalm that describes it as a triumphant song of confidence. But the psalm isn't all confidence. And, and it's also one of fear. It, it's fear, almost terror in the midst of the passage. And that's a common flow for many of us in life. It really is a psalm of vacillating faith. Some scholars suggest that it's actually two psalms joined together. But the common linguistics suggest, defies that. And the way it is written, we can relate. We can put ourselves in these places as we read Psalm 27. It begins with confidence while the, with the, in the Lord while evil assails. Can anybody relate to that today? <laughs> yes. I can literally say I found myself in the sanctuary, in this sanctuary as my sanctuary in times of strife. The second section talks about is how sanctuary is, is where I want to spend the rest of my life uh, from my troubles. And, and I've been here and I've wanted nothing more than to be cared for by the presence of God and not to go back out into the world. Anybody else ever been there? We can relate never wanting to leave. Many, almost all of the commentaries question when David is to have written this psalm. Some think it was before he came to throne. Others think or speculate that it was late in life as a reflection on his life. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is that we can relate. 
We seek God's face when there is a crisis. Amen? This is by God's design, by the way. And a commentary on BibleRef.com says this, David knew the Lord wanted him to seek his face. In fact, this is God's desire for all people. The word, the Hebrew word translated seek from the original Hebrew, this verse is addressed to a group of people, not just to one person. This isn't a one-on-one with David. The, the King James Version puts, it, puts God's di- desire more directly than our passage, than our translation today. It says, when thou saidest, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. In other words, God wants us to seek it. God is calling us to seek God. And Philippians completes this thought or this process in the New Testament. It says in Philippians 4.19, And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ. God wants us to seek God's face. What makes Psalm 27 is so impactful is that it defines the journey of faith as being one of a balance between faith and need. Our journey is balanced between faith and need. In verses 1 through 3, the need of protection is is countered with confident faith. Listen again. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Though an army and enemy camp against me, in my heart I shall not fear. Listen to the confidence in that voice. And then in verses 4 through 6, again in that sanctuary setting. In the midst of the sanctuary, our faith is nourished while balanced with what verse 6 says. My enemies are all around me. Do you remember what happened at 9-11 in every congregation and every church in the country? We flocked to be there. We needed God. Brothers and sisters, we need God today. Amen? Amen. But then the psalmist goes through that moment of terror. Listen to those words again. I call out to you. Answer me. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn away in anger. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me. His faith has lost its strength. He's gone weak in the knees. Do you hear it in those words? It's what's going on in in the midst of what can only be considered overwhelming odds because he is overwhelmed. David needs God precisely because his faith has faltered. And again, I will say, we can relate. We have those terror moments in our lives when we cry out to God, Help! Where are you? Just as Christ did on the cross as death awaited. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is in the need of faith, in our hour of need, that we all experience that need to seek God's face. Remember Peter walking on the water so confident until he got about two steps and started to sink into the, into the ocean. He lacked his faith. The more we need, we have the more faith is needed. The more need we have, the more faith is needed. Amen? But then the passage goes on, and just as quickly it's restored. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, verse 13 says. And then he says something that is critical. Wait for the Lord. Now, in Hebrew, this is... this. Translation. This phrase actually translates like something that something that you would twist, almost like a rubber band. You know, when you twist a rubber band together, it it gets tense. It gets a little tenser, and and so this passage is suggesting tension. Wait in the tension. The psalmist says, David is writing, "Be strong and let your heart take courage." Again, it says, "Wait for the Lord, even in the tension of the moment, even." In the tension of this day, especially in the tension of this day, in this moment, 
we seek God. This psalm is how life works. What we are called to is plain and simple. God. To seek God's face in the tension of need and faith. To seek God's faith continuously. We look for God's faith in others. That's why Paul says in Philippians 3.17, Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. And I always thought, gosh, Paul, you sound a little bit of a sold on yourself here. Sounds a little egotistical, doesn't it? <laughs> Imitate me. Look what I'm doing. But that's not what he's saying. It's not an egotistical claim, but a look for the face of God in those who have faith when yours is failing. Look for God. In the wilderness, there can be clarity. When we consider all that we've been through in life and how God appeared it only makes sense that we should always seek God. Think about the things in your life. Can you imagine going through those without God at your side? Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. We don't wait for the scales to be tipped in need. We seek God because that is God's plan. Seek my face. It is for our redemption. Acts 17, 26 and 27 says, From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted times on their existence and the boundaries of places where they would live. So they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far off from each one of us. It would seem today that the world has stopped seeking God. I hear the, Jesus speaking to us in Luke thirteen thirty four, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city on the hill that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent out to it. How often have I desired to gather you as children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. That's been what this week's been about. I didn't understand why I was preaching on seek God. I didn't understand why the lectionary, which is what I'm following this series, had Psalm 27 as the one that stood out to me. But then this week happened. The United Methodist Church is dealing with people and churches in our our conference here in Florida that, that wants to leave the United Methodist Church. The United Methodist Church isn't splitting. People are choosing to leave, but it is frightening. The UMC, the UMC is the same church it has always been, struggling over difficult issues, but standing united and pledging to the world that all are welcome, but some want to exclude others. The church won't, and so they are choosing to leave. But the United Methodist Church is staying here. Amen? It is scary. It's a kick in the gut. I have friends that I have served for two decades in ministry that are walking out the door. It's a kick in the gut. But seeking God in the midst of this sad and fearful time is what we do. It's what we're called to do. It's who we are. In the Ukraine, the evil seems insurmountable in Ukraine, but the Ukrainians believe. Verse 3, listen to verse 3. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet will I be confident. I pray that we seek God for and with the Ukrainian people this day. Seek God. America, 
America, Daytona, Daytona, Port Orange, Port Orange. We are in the wilderness and in our need. We are, and we are always there in that place of need. And always you and I can be a witness to the world if we seek God's face. Not that hard. Much easier than most instruction manuals that I've never read. Seek God's face. Seek the face of God. So look for God today. I suspect you'll be surprised where you find God and where you find God's presence. It is in the tension between need and faith that we see God. We will no doubt waver in our faith and confidence, but God will not waver. Say that with me. God will not waver. Say it again. God will not waver. God is calling us out, calling to us now. Seek my face. First Chronicles 16.11 says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Brothers and God, brothers and sisters, seek God continually. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.